Well, here we are. It is a Thursday morning now, June seventh, June eighteenth. Hope you're doing well. And right off the bat, I believe I have my good friend. Uh, I think he'd be okay with me call that my good friend Mike Myers. Good morning, sir. Bing bong. Are you hearing me, my friend? Oh, cool. Ah, you know what? You're not. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm great. I just realized. Please request recording permission from the meeting host. I'm requesting okay. permission, sir. Ha okay. Well, let me record it then. Hold on one second. No, and... no, no. I think I get to record on my end. I just need your permission. Yeah, go for it. Well, but I have to get your permission. You have to click a button. Yeah, I haven't gotten an, uh, an invite yet. To what record. the hell are you doing? I haven't seen a request yet. Good morning. Good morning, buddy. How are you? I'm I'm actually doing really well. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great show. Uh, don't answer a fool. Your silence is killing me. Well, then maybe you should just die. Ooh, sounds like a fiery topic. And by the way, I would be more fired up, but my right eye is a little pain up here. I don't know what's going on, but that's scary. It's weird. And so, and my grandmother had a history of myasthenia gravis, which does affect the eyesight. I don't think I have that, but I'll get it checked out soon enough. But I wanted to tell you, you know, we missed a very important day yesterday. We forgot. Please we didn't even recording talk. permission from the, please request recording permission from the meeting host. So just hit the button or something. Oh, okay. Well, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <clears throat> Um, but you know, we missed kind of covering a big topic yesterday, which I didn't even know until I watched 30 for 30 last night on ESPN. Yesterday was the anniversary of the OJ Simpson chase. Yesterday? Yesterday. Yep. June 17th, 1994 was the chase. No way. Yep. And I remember where I was. I was on the carpet resting at two and a half years old, watching it on TV. <laughs> Really? You know, his he was such a winner up until that. I mean, he was such a powerhouse, a name, and a two, movie star, and great player, Hall of Fame football player. Well, I'll be darned. Well, so what I want to ask you was, where were you during that day? I'm sure you remember it. Um, I believe... My, uh, I was at my mom's house and my stepdad had just died. Wow. Yeah. But I thought it was the 13th, but I don't know why. That's when he, that's when he changed addresses. But yeah, that was, jeez. <laughs> but what I didn't realize was people were cheering him as he rolled past him in California. Like there were people lining up on the overpasses in the streets. I'm I'm telling you, it's just, just a crazy time in which we're living. I, th I think it's crazier than I've ever seen it. <clears throat> no, it is, and it was just it was it's interesting to see how similar those times are to today, right? Because that led to like a big, another big rift, and we were just coming off the Crown House riots two years ago, and and ninety uh, two, and then this happens, and of course he was not found to have done it, which is still a very questionable you know result of that case but yeah it's uh it's uh you know what's done in the dark will be exposed in the light so you know but of course if, you know uh, mm -hmm. if you're guilty you're guilty and you might as well fess up now and take the you know take the punishment do the time for the crime but no no we're too busy saying I didn't do it. It wasn't me. It was that woman you gave me. God, it's your fault. Mm. It's been going on forever. So it's now you, you're you telling me you complain when, when God gives you the right woman and you say, she's not right for me or something? Is that what you No, no, that's what Adam did. Oh. Adam, Adam got upset with God because, you see, Adam was the one that got credit for the first sin because he listened to his wife, but he knew he should have listened to God. And so when, when God challenged him on it, he said, well, it was that woman you gave me. It's like, <laughs> you didn't say that when you first saw her. It's like, whoa, man, look at those. Well, and look I at mean, us today. I feel like we're not too far off, are we? We're, we're not. That's why I, 
I, I have a video that I posted on my uh, Facebook page about answering a fool. And I, I just love God's word because he says, you know, don't answer a fool. And yet if you're going to, it's one thing that you don't want to answer a fool, but you might want to respond to somebody who is ignorant, mm. who doesn't know better. Yeah, you have to respond to them with love, I think, anyway. Oh, oh absolutely. In love and truth. Speak the truth in love with, and give them, a, 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 you know, a, a reason for the hope that lies within with gentleness and respect, not beating the crap out of them. I love God's word. It's just he's so on it. And yet he also, uh, somebody yesterday posted uh, yeah, something about, yeah, well, when you wonder what Jesus would do, mm. he, he'd probably kick over the tables and pull out a couple of whips and i asked this guy who i really i've talked to you about him before his name's george wagner and i really don't know if i'm going to engage him or not uh i did i didn't see any response and i don't want to pick a fight just to pick a fight but i think george is just he's he's not stupid he's just ignorant and i'm ignorant in many different ways i mean when i told a friend of mine yesterday that was trying to quit meth that i was been reading the big A, you know, the A mm -hmm. book and drinking beer. Like, he said, well, that's kind of arrogant. I said, I don't think it's arrogant. I think it's just quite a snapshot of my stupidity, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you anyway, weave all sorry. these, you weave all these characters into these different storylines. Just, it's very interesting to see how you can, and no one that I know wouldn't know the names are thrown out there. That's why it's even more interesting to me. It's like, Here's Mike talking about his little town of Boone and, and talking about it over there. And yet, you have a way to fit them as if it was a plot line every day, and I kind of like that. Well, it is fascinating. It's, I just, what they stopped over yesterday, and I was, uh, well, how do I put this? I was taking a dump, and uh, they thought I was taking an old man's nap, so they left, and I got outside quickly enough to get them to come back and sit down, and then I was asked if I washed my hands. It's like, oh, boy. So anyway, it you was did a wash good your hands, though, right? This is why I'm a reporter. I ask the important questions because now you got me thinking. I would tell you my own experience with something in so, post bathroom. So let me ask you. Let, but, uh, wait a minute. Let me ask, let let me ask you this question. Do you always wash your hands? So you put can down I, that rock? Can I admit? Can I admit something? Up until yeah, quarantine, I, I had not. <laughs> Up until quarantine, I kind of... Mm -hmm. That, you know what? I, I'm not having a spiritual O thing. I get you. I used to work at a place where uh, I ended up with some kind of fungal growth on my hands and my fingers because this bathroom we used, nobody washed in it. I don't even think there was a... Was there a sink in there? I think it was like a Kaibo in the middle of this factory. It was a area. trough. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pretty much. And and seriously. And then you think, wow, that guy just, and now I do notice that when I'm in the bathroom. Normally I would. Now with COVID maybe coming to an end. You're going to go back to not washing your hands? No, I, it's a great <laughs> habit. It's not something that I... You know, integrity is doing is doing is what you do when nobody's watching. Mm. I mean, real integrity. Wash your freaking hands, you dim twit. Well, I didn't know who was at the door, so I thought it might be more. And then I went out and shook their hands, and no, I didn't. I'm kidding. Can you say that line one more time? Uh, integrity is what you do when no one watches. Well, yeah, real integrity is is what am I doing when? when people aren't watching am i i mean i can get away with not washing my hands nobody's nobody's watching me anyway well yeah there is someone greater than you and he's not ready to you know zap you with a lightning bolt he just wants you to do the right thing and the right thing is to be others focused and you might shake their hand i what i like to do is is to wash my hands and not dry them and then shake their hands after i come out of the bathroom <laughs> i love that you're a practical joker almost every day. <laughs> I'm a dork. But you know, the thing with me is like, <laughs> it's like Leslie Nielsen in The Naked Gun during quarantine because he, he tells um, 
Oh my gosh. He tells Priscilla Presley, you know, since I started loving you, I noticed stoplights and the birds. And I'm like, yeah, I just noticed a sinking quarantine. So I guess we're similar in that regard. <laughs> you know, there's uh, the, it's a great time to just laugh. My uh, brother sent me a, in fact, I'll, I'll send it to you. Will I? Yes. It's, uh, he's, he lives down in Texas. And, uh, deep in the a, heart uh, of Texas, <laughs> deep in the heart of Texas. Well, let me tell you what, yes, and day. So, anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a picture of a bait shop, and they're, I guess, they're getting some pressure to change the name. It's called Master Baiters. <laughs> Yellow, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, can you? You're you're a little muffled today. Are you wearing a mask? No, I'm not. Can you hear me right now? I, the internet. Oh, that's I, much better. Okay. Yeah, the internet might have zonked out yeah. on me for a second. But so are you no, saying? No, I it's think a, it's your poor. It's your poor mic placement. Are you? Uh, and literally, my mic's right in front of my face, right here, right here. Well, fine. Excuse me. I am so freaking sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were telling me you have a great show today. What's going on on there? That's so great and so exciting. Well, it is about, let's take a look here. I was supposed to have Todd on today, oh, Todd right. Stevens, and he kind of sort of canceled, but it was kind of cute because he said, well, I'm not going to be able to make it. My boss put an extra heavy load on me. I hope you didn't promote it yet. And I said, well, yeah, hello. I mean, this was at 10 o'clock last night. I hope you didn't promote it yet. We're going to do it the next morning. <laughs> and I... So what I learned from this is maybe it's best not to no i was going to blanket statement something and that's not good i was going to say maybe it's best to just exclude any outsiders in a in a podcast that's just stupid that because would be I was stupid. stood up it's to totally ignorant it's, it's about like, patience whatever, with that, right you want someone day of well you got someone book day of oh. they, they 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 pull out now you've got to have the patience to say okay that's life. I'll change everything around, and then I'll book them for another day. That's just kind of how my mentality has been during this whole. Or oh mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Or you plan on seven o'clock every morning with somebody from another country, uh -huh. and uh, then they uh, they well, I'm not feeling it today. Well, video wise, I'm not feeling. It. <laughs> or maybe they're like, oh gosh, I just woke up. Sorry. I know it's two minutes till your show. Can we go ahead and do it? <laughs> I don't know who that person is at all. I don't. I've never met that person. Uh, yeah, at I'm, all, I'm seeing a still shot of him as we speak. <laughs> Sony headphones. Jeez, <laughs> I got Sony's too. I love. So anyway, I love yeah, I'm. 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 I'm looking at myself. I'm checking out. I was at this pastor's office one day trying to see if they would be willing to get on board and do a, a help promote a Christian concert for us and 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 he all the time he was he had lost a bunch of weight and he was standing in front of his full-length mirror in his office just kind of sort of checking himself out and i'm thinking oh my gosh and i'm sure I've, I've done the same thing i mean after all look at me i do the same thing every morning why is my hair a mess oh that hair looks nice today so i just talk to myself over and over again <laughs> well wait wait till it has more to do with having one inch hairs growing growing off of your ears that's really fun oh i have I that issue. the hair off my mom's face that's love that is love well you know that is interesting <laughs> no because in the, in the latter stages of life your hair starts to grow on the face more so than before and i really don't know what that's about it's just it's there's nature, an interesting thought yeah. What, yeah what's the interesting thought about hair growing in places where it's like, come on, God, is this some kind of a joke? I mean, you you, you took it off the top <laughs> and the backside when I was 30 years old and I was depressed for two weeks because I saw it in a rearview mirror at a beauty salon. <sighs> you know, do you know what will get you in trouble? This is way off the subject. Anything, but it seems like. Getting, yeah, pretty much. Getting your hair cut at a place called the Petticoat Palace. Why is that? What? What? what, what? Well, what I my wife saw the check and she thought I was, I don't know, messing around or something. Oh, with yeah, girls in petticoats really, or something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm into petticoats. 
Might anyway, be. how today's show, how to answer or not answer a fool. It it is so it's a diagram video. And it's so right on. And it has to do with you know, when somebody says, Well, the fact that you're not responding, I, I have a problem with you not responding. Well, it's like, so how long have you been how long have you been beating your wife? Whew. I haven't been beating my wife. So now I have to respond to that and prove that I haven't been so I'm guilty until proven innocent. How do I put this in a really loving way? F you, you son of a frick. Oh. Well, yeah. And um it's not the right response. But 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 the guilty before being proven innocent is uh has really become the norm. They've switched it around entirely. It's not that innocent before guilty like they used to praise and talk about all the time. Now it's the other way around, which is just... It's detrimental, actually. Oh, it's detrimental. It's detrimental? That sounds like some kind of... All right. Oh, it's really not a good thing. It isn't... <laughs> it's not a good thing at all. Um, it's detrimental. And it just... I, you know, this cop in Atlanta getting all this stuff thrown at him, it's kind of um, absurd to me. But when we talk about... Guilty before innocent. I just feel like that's kind of what has been going on with this cop. Now, shoot him in the back two times or however it did. I don't know. But when you have a taser on you that you've just stolen from the cops, you can't run away from that. You have to just cooperate as far as I'm concerned. And I saw a short video clip last night about uh, the fact that they consider a taser the same as a is it like a gun that's what i was hearing this morning like a fifty thousand watt taser or something is is like a gun or something to that effect yeah you're you're right on and so i don't know i might be a little upset if somebody grabbed my taser which i don't have a taser um i did hold one the other day and hit the button (laughs) scary tool and it might be funny, but you know, the Chicago police had a horse stolen from them. Someone was riding along the streets of Illinois during the whole protest and everything on a Chicago PD horse. So you look at that. You look at what happened in Minneapolis burning down the precinct. You look at Seattle where the precinct isn't even occupied by the cops. It's just got, you know, by Chaz over there, that autonomous zone. Then you look at this. What's happened is, and the taser thing may be a more common thing than those other, those other examples, But people have really felt emboldened to just take away every property of the cops. And I'm not, I'm not sure when that trend will redirect, but it should redirect itself hopefully soon. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that the, the, the total insanity of a number of people, not the majority although it kind of seems like maybe it is because of the coverage they get, is going to severely backfire. And I am, I uh, I think Trump is going to really, ooh, I predict a pretty healthy victory. After this, I think so, especially when he starts his rallies again. We'll have to see how that goes. On Saturday oh, speaking, for of, speaking of that, they're going to have the, uh, they just uh, announced that they're going to do the uh, the farm show here in Boone. Big, big deal. And there's people that are not real happy about that. But th- I think farmers are maybe a little more practical. Practical. And they need some way to make money, right? So you're going to have this farm show sell some stuff, I presume. And you'll oh. get the economy back. The, the the farm show the the that a big it's big, I mean it is a it is a humongous event. Would you broadcast and, uh, live from there? <laughs> wow, um, no, okay. Although there are a lot of, of folks that set up little booths that uh, there was one outfit that they were giving away uh, walking sticks. Okay. With a leather, a leather strap on it, and a, and and different colored beads that explain the uh, the good news. Huh. Yeah. No, that sounds kind of interesting. I gotta check that out now. Um, so that's it good. Is, it is. It is interesting. So I gotta ask you this now because 
I love getting into your podcasting techniques. As you know, I ask all this stuff. So, guy cancels on you. How does that change your preparation yeah. for the show that day? Because you still got to do a show. So, how do you instantly switch topics and and figure out what you can do as a backup? You know, um, my head just really doesn't stop very well. Here's a doozer for you to answer your question. So yesterday, I'm taking my old man's nap, and I'm reading my AA big book. I hadn't had anything to drink at that point. And I uh, actually didn't until last night at, I don't know, 6 o'clock. Focus, Mike, you can do it. I didn't wake up with a hangover either. And I'm reading this, and and basically what I got from this person's testimony is – you're not, oh, there's a song I need to play today, too. You're not going to find peace mm. and rest in a freaking bottle of booze. It's like, Mike, you're looking for you're looking for rest and peace in all the wrong places. What is up with you? How could you be that foolish when you mm. have been? I, I mean, it was like. It, it, it was an epiphany, and I just put the book down and. I'll be just brutally honest with you. I got all choked up. I think I shed a tear or two. It's like my, it, it was, it was, a, it was another come to Jesus moment. And to learn that through the AA whole deal, which is a very spirit shell program. It was just, cause those huh. two things, peace and rest. I got all the hope in the world. You do. But peace and rest. It's like, well, you're not going to find it in a freaking bottle. You're going to, you dim twit. As positive as you are, and um, I know that you are very, you're the eternal optimist in a way, but as positive as you are, just like me, I mean, I, I like to think I'm positive too, but we all go through that restlessness and non-peaceful with ourselves, partly because we want to make sure our podcasts are right, partly because we don't know where the world's going, and when you do drink, it just exacerbates, it, it accelerates your... Your restlessness, and that's why I kind of tried to stop. <laughs> now that's another problem that I'm struggling with. Exasperating. Oh no, that's never mind. So you you drank what? last night after reading this, or what did you end up doing? Yeah, I did. I think I had a total of uh, I had a shot uh, of a vodka. And I had two beers, that all in a period of about four hours. So it's not like I'm a lush. Right. But why is the mm. question? Why do you feel the need to do it? I got you. Um, yeah. I, I can't answer that because I don't know what your day-to-day is like, but I'm sure there's that factor too. What? You, oh, Stress? No, just day-to-day things that could lead you to drink after the day is done. That's kind of like a norm nowadays with people. Which is kind of, you know, and again, it's, I tell people, uh, they're like, you know, Bob Huber, it, <laughs> I had mentioned this on the show for quite a while. I was like, you know, because I was doing uh, special creamer in my car. What the, Why? Why would he, I mean, and, and he said, he said, uh, Mike, if you ever need somebody to talk to, you know, give me a call. Well, I love Bob. Bob was, was my point man at that time. <laughs> but I appreciate the fact that he threw that out there. I thought it was kind of. Point was kinda man for what now again? Oh, well, I've been talking about this, this, this alcohol thing for quite a while. And a, a former meth addict uh, yesterday had uh, said, you know, the fact that you are feeling convicted about this, um, you know, just keep just keep at it. I mean, I think the final result will be stop it. Just stop. I think that's what it'll be. I told so, my wife last night when I when I when I popped open a beer, I said, I'm opening a beer. And she said, you don't normally tell me that. Why are you telling me that? I said, I don't know. I'm, I just am. Mm. Well, let me ask you this. So you, well, obviously... When you were on your podcast and when you're doing this stuff, you're trying to be a, a voice of reason when it comes to alcohol and a voice of like, you don't have to do this to get through life and stuff. But when you open the bottle yourself, 
Do you feel like you're letting those people that you talk to down, or do you just not even think of that? Do I think I'm letting somebody else down when I open the bottle? Yeah, absolutely. if you're... No, no, okay. absolutely not. No. I don't think people should follow me as I follow Christ. They really need to just follow Christ. <laughs> Don't let me get in between him and your high between. Don't ever let another human being get in between your relationship with God because they can twist it mm. and it can get really messed up. And pretty soon you're, I mean, it was, a, it was at a Stephen ministry meeting that I learned how to drink again. <laughs> it's like all these, all these Lutherans are fine with drinking wine and I'm, gee, it's no big deal. Plus I found out you, there's sweet wine. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I like sweet stuff. I don't, I, you know, I would probably, maybe not a good thing, but I would probably drink more if I enjoyed the flavor. I just read this last night in this AA book. Mm. This guy was saying, psychiatrist, he said, you know, I can't, one, one person would say, I can't stand the taste. I like the effect. And the other one says, I so much love the taste that I'll get it on my fingers and I can't wait to lick it off. I mean, it's really a, a cunning Alcohol is very, it's... And if you notice, it's, it's become the, more creative over the years. Like, it's not just your regular beer. They now have designer uh, shots and designer drinks and designer, like, yeah. mixes and stuff like that. It's not just your regular crack open a bottle and that's it. There's so many complexities to it. Um, I think that's my generation creating it, though. It just seems like that because my generation just loves to explore, you know, alcohol. So they just create different things and it becomes norm. Like, I don't know, and IPAs were not something that anybody drank years ago. Like, that kind of became a new thing. Well, and that's, uh, it, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up, because I'm supposed to be meeting with a guy that, uh, I don't know if he's still part owner or not, but uh, in the Boone Valley Brewery at 4 o'clock. Now, I usually get, they, they make root beer. Uh, like, root, usually get, like regular root, alcoholic root yeah. beer? Okay. Not just regular root beer. I mean, it's got no alcohol in it. Now, last week when I was there, he served me up a very, very tiny bit of something that's like 12% alcohol. And I could see where drinking that, I would, if I had a whole glass of that, I'd need to walk home. I would not want to drive. Mm. And here's another one. This, this housewife, she's like, her house became her bar. I mean, she she knew that she couldn't drink because she had kids to take care of, and yet she drank at home, and she had stuff hidden everywhere, and and you know, I I don't hide. At one time, I was, I wasn't hiding the, you know, I did kind of sort of hide the alcohol, you know. So Alex, I'm looking at all this and realizing, mm. if more people would 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 recognize the fact that. James chapter one talks about sin and and how we uh, tend to uh, feed it. Uh -huh. And then we want to blame somebody else. You know, I can't blame this on, on nobody else. It's my own fault. I went ahead and did it. Uh, and uh, so you and then you give birth to a sin baby if you mm. allow this baby to come to fruition and it can kill you. Because sin does lead to death. That's what he says. And by the way, I, I as part of the pregnancy stuff, I kind of am curious to know if women, I don't think all women drink, obviously, during their pregnancy, but is there like a certain percentage that do still drink while oh. pregnant? Or Oh, absolutely. I knew one gal, uh, knew her quite well, who had uh, a couple of kids that had eye issues and I don't know what the term is, but it was because she... Glaucoma, maybe, or something? Like that. No, their eyes were really... Stra it was very strange. Um, but it was because of consuming alcohol during pregnancy. I, uh, I have no words for that, because that's just as horrible to me. But... Well, I used to... My son... <laughs> this is not funny, but I'm glad he can make a joke of it. Uh, and my mom had... Well, maybe it's, it's uh, uh, hereditary... Oh. My mom had a lazy eye, and mm. we would always like, "Mom, which one of us are you yelling at? Who's in <sighs> who's in trouble?" <laughs> oh, Michael! <laughs> and my son Daniel has has a, a a lazy eye, and when he gets really really tired, 
I mean, it, it starts acting up on him. And I thought maybe, boy, this is a true confession, that it was my pot smoking mm. during that time. That cut, and I felt terrible. I, I mean, felt you know, really You bad. didn't carry him for nine months, though. No, but I was a donator. Yeah, yep. Oh, so you think the pot might have gotten to sperm? I, I kind of get what you're saying. Did yeah. you say sp- I can't believe you said the S word. It's a, what, what is this, a censored program? No, it's a... It's... <laughs> <What> sperm? <laughs> no. Nah. Anyway. Uh, well, by the way, some to... breaking, one breaking news for you just now. The last okay. surviving sibling of John F. Kennedy has died. Gene Kennedy Smith. Dead at 92 oh. today. Wow. And with it goes a whole first, yeah, well, second lineage after Joe Kennedy. See, after Joe Kennedy, there goes that. I always thought Eunice Kennedy was still alive, but I guess he did pass a while ago. Hmm. That, uh, I do remember, I think it was in 60, was it in 63 that President Kennedy was assassinated? She might actually be the sister, yes. And she might be the sister that they put in the home. I don't know, though. Because remember, Joe had one of his kids put into a home and lobotomized or something like that. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't know that. You see, you, you know a lot of things I don't, I don't know. It wasn't her, then. It was the other one. I mean, because that was a big part of the trauma that that family had. Because of it. for his sons to be in politics, he actually wanted the special needs sister out of the way which is horrible but that is what happened wow because wow. joe kennedy you know he wasn't exactly a good father he just he wanted his kids in there anyway am i boring you with this i just it's just flow of common no, no right you're 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 not and it's a lot there's a lot of things that i don't know especially when it comes to um like political history oh yeah breaking news gene kennedy smith last surviving sibling you know, a person could just sit here and do a 24-7 if you were that. Do I got things in Michael. <laughs> do, you find, do you find me, uh, yesterday when I went to uh, visit my, my son's boss, my old boss, I told him that I was, uh, I was obsessed with fishing. And he said, you obsessed? <laughs> really? I tend to get obsessed. I, I do. I do, too. And, and I get burned for it sometimes, to be honest with you. You get burned out or you get burned? I get burned. Like, I get obsessed with a girlfriend of mine. I get burned there. I get obsessed with, you know, something, and it burns oh. out eventually. And it's just like, well, maybe I shouldn't have put all that energy into it. Sometimes I start thinking. Wow. Which is interesting because I think I could definitely be obsessed with the possibility that maybe I'm a alcoholic. I think it's good to be aware. But it is, obsessed. but the way you said it just now, it sounds like you want to test that theory a little more every day. I don't know. No, actually, the more I, it's kind of like, duh, Mike, if mm. you drink too much, you wake up the next day with a hangover. Huh, I wonder why that happens, Michael. <laughs> I didn't this morning. It was great because I didn't drink, and I don't always drink every day. That's good. And when I drink, I I don't drink to get drunk. Mm. Sometimes I think I shoot pool better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, I'm going to try to get a, a video here. That All right, before. I'll ask you tomorrow Maybe. about it. Uh-huh. I'm starting to wonder about the videos. Yeah, they're, they're catching fire, aren't they? Well, I, I'm not real sure. I mean, as far as the listenership and stuff, they're fun to do, and I – and and. uh I think I need to post actually like today's show yesterday was, was that offends me. Right. You know, well, and today, um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, Oh, that reminds me of a song. It's called vacillate. It's, <laughs> it's the number one song. It's number one on this guy's CD that I was going to do. Great, cool. great tune. Yeah. Vacillate. Michael, one last thought for you before you go. Squirrel. Do you th- <laughs> do you think nostalgia is good for us? Because I saw a documentary in which a group was developed called the anti-nostalgia. And I thought, looking back last night, the whole 94 and the chase, I thought, 
we need nostalgia. I don't know why people think we don't, but we do need the nostalgia of the times, right? To keep us moving forward. Yeah. I mean, someone sent me a video the other day about, you know, when we were kids, I think I'd mentioned this, you know, still alive, even though I was chewing on lead based paint and we played outside until the street lights came on and played in the streets and, you know, we play. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, mercury. That was in the the old thermometers. I don't know if they use mercury anymore, but we would we would get mercury out of a, like a mercury switch for a for a for like a thermostat. Whoa! And get this, we'd put it in our hands, and it was like this heavy little bubble of silver stuff, and then put a dime in it, and then rub it, so, and the dime looked like it was brand new mercury. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we didn't have a clue how dangerous that was. And now here's alcohol and it's very dangerous. And it'll give you cirrhosis of the liver and kill your kidneys and your brain cells and everything else. And here I'm still. <laughs> well, I'll let you get into, to your video. I'm curious. Did I answer you... your question? You kind of did. I mean, I just think we shouldn't abolish nostalgia entirely. And I don't know That's why. That's crazy. Why uh, groups were nuts. formed about that. That is just weird to me. Uh, well, to me and by the way. Me it's, mm -hmm. Well, it's like abolishing history, kind of, sort of. I mean, nostalgia. When I have, we get these uh, really good, tasty sandwiches from this one place. And every time I take a bite of one, I say it, it tastes like ice skating. It, hickory smoked. We used to burn hickory when we'd ice skate and get our, you know, get all warm around the fire. Mm -hmm. it I, That's nostalgia, right? It, I mean, to me, that's. Yeah. And we, we should obsess on the past too, because if we obsess on it, if we remember things, if we remember anniversaries, if we remember things, uh, you know, deaths and all that, we will have a better yeah. understanding of what shaped our country. We can't not ignore all those historical events. And it, what shapes our own lives. You know, you talk about uh, uh, O.J. Simpson, and I remember watch. I swear I was watching that, though, with my stepdad, and he passed away on the 13th of June, 1994. And that's when he said, you need to move to Boone and tell those young people about Jesus. Uh -huh. and, then, and then we finally moved. And then two weeks later, the house that we sold, the basement wall caved in. <laughs> oh, my gosh. They thought they got such a good deal. <laughs> I thought the other wall was going to cave in, so at least I didn't, you know. <clears throat> wow, so right okay. after you leave. All right, well, we'll, we'll pick it up tomorrow, but uh, love our conversations as always, Mike. Radio Hope, 9 a.m. Eastern, 20 minutes from now. I'm going to wrap up here, but Mike, have a great show. Yeah, and I still, please request recording permission from the meeting host. Huh. <laughs> okay. One day we'll get there uh, where you can request it. No, 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 no. Here's how we fix that. I send you the request, and I don't need to ask you for permission. Mike's tired of my shit today. I get it. I get it. Is there somebody there in the room with you? No, just me. Why? Oh, I thought you were talking to yourself. Oh, I guess we both do that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love you, Ian. Right. Talk Have to you a later. Good day. Bye. Yep. Yeah, bye. So here's the thing. I uh, thank you, Mike Myers, for joining. But I'm I'm gonna go for a little bit longer here. I had watched this docu documentary. <coughs> Excuse me. On a woman named Marion. Let me just see if I got her name right. Marion Stokes. Marion Stokes had recorded thousands of hours of television. From 1977 to 2012, capturing the most historic moments in our history through these recordings, through these tapes, which have now been made public in California at a um, archives institute. I'm hoping to get someone on there. You got to check out Recorder, the Marion Stokes project, by the way. I mean, I, I highly recommend it because she was recording television 24 hours a day. For 30 years, starting in 1979 with the Iranian hostage crisis, and then ending it on December 14th, 2012, while Sandy Hook played on the television, the Sandy Hook disaster massacre, 
played the on television as Marion passed away. I would love to get someone from this documentary, her son, the director, the guy at the archive place. Because this is very fascinating. But in those videos they shot, they did say a group called anti, uh, a group for anti-nostalgia, the cause of anti-nostalgia, was created. And it was created by a few different guys. And they thought that if we kept looking backwards, I want, I want to get the right story here because I don't, I don't want to mess this up. But they figured, here we go, New York Times, lifestyle, sick of the 60s, three men of the, three men of the 80s try to give nostalgia a bad name. Their names were Eugene Dillenberg, Bruce Elliott, and John Kinney right here in Flushing, Queens. They're all Beatles fans, but they just wanted to give, as the time says, nostalgia a bad name. And uh, Dylan Burke had said there are sheer numbers of uh, forcing me to live in their past. And these guys were in their 20s, right? So they felt the 80s pop culture was entrenched in the 60s and that kids would otherwise be discovering the world around them or wishing they had gone to Woodstock. That's what they're saying in, in 1980s. I think this generation needs to preserve the nostalgia once again. I think we cannot let it go. I cannot. We have to have kids learn the history of our country to respect it more and to change it more. To be a voice of change for the better in this country. I've said a long time ago, the Founding Fathers built this country on debate. Nostalgia is part of that debate. People probably, when they see those documentaries, think back to when they were debating the OJ case. Think about how that could have gone differently. Uh... When they watch 9-11, they think, well, how do we let this happen? I mean, there are so many different avenues of nostalgia that do bring us together, debate us, debate each other more. And realize that we are all survivors. I mean, you have family who who survived the Holocaust. You have families who've survived even in Ireland. I mean, because a lot of the, some of the nation is Irish and we cannot then deny the survival skill was in our ancestors who survived the potato famine. So all these different events cannot be um, forgotten. Just as an example, those events cannot be forgotten. Because it does make us who we are. It makes us who we were. When we learn about slavery, we we work to make sure that does get eradicated even more through the racist tendencies of some. This is why... This is why ripping down the statues, how hurtful and how offensive as they might be to many or to some... You really are negating the history of our country. There were fighters on both sides. The Union did, thank God, win. The Reconstruction did happen. These, these, that particular war helped define who we were. Helped us, I think, get closer together. Then the 50s and 60s realized we needed more work to do. So the Civil Rights Movement, Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came about. 
And with the ever-growing coverage of police brutality, that's the next movement that's starting. I hope this movement, though, doesn't do away with the police. I hope that they can frame it in ways that are just so much more effective than defund the police, because no one wants that. No sensible person wants that. We all agree there's still a need for the police. We all agree that there is nostalgia in play still because you look at the moment Trump said he's going to invoke the military, people automatically went to how the 92 riots in L.A. following Rodney King went down with military deployment under H.W. Bush. So if we if we completely... Wow. <laughs> wow. These guys who didn't want nostalgia uh, were, were uh, you know, sent letters saying, you brats, how dare you? And so they feel that they're creating, they, they can't create anything. Wow, and guess what? This is interesting. This guy, Mr. Kinney, he actually passed out flyers that weekend at the site of the 1964 World's Fair in Flushing next to the uniform, a Unisphere to, to not celebrate it. <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a weird idea to eradicate nostalgia. I, I couldn't do it. I I look at the way my nostalgia, my past was, and many of you see that on Alex Gene NYC on Twitter. Many of you see it on Instagram as well, Alex Gene NYC. Because I believe, like everybody else, the the past is make us who we are today. We've learned the mistakes of the past, but we cannot eradicate the mistakes of the past. Because if we do that. It's like we just don't want to even acknowledge it. And we should still acknowledge it. The pain was there. The pain is there. The pain continues for so many. And they're taking out that pain and destroying the statues. They're taking that pain and peacefully protesting up and down Broadway, which I don't mind. They don't want to forget the past. They want to say, hey, this has been going on forever. Let's change it now. Now, after the death of George Floyd and the very visual of it, we must change the way things are done here in this country. So I give them applause. And you know what? The, the civil rights movement in, in the 50s and 60s, in the 50s especially with Martin Luther King Jr., effective. Change happened. Change can happen here. But according to these three guys that formed this thing in the 80s, they uh, they don't want us to think about it. They want us to be anti-nostalgia. No, dudes. Nostalgia is what makes this country move day to day. In its very own way. And we must keep it that way. I'm Alex Garrett. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And uh, a little later, Florence Finkel of NACOL. You'll figure out what NACOL is. Excuse me? She'll be joining me, and we'll uh, send that link out. Talk to you soon, everybody.